everyone, it's Diabetic Danica, and welcome back to my channel. So, since this weekend, I kind of have to mostly stay indoors and not go places. I was like, okay, I definitely wanna film a video, and I was trying so hard to think of things that I could film besides talking about COVID-19 or coronavirus, and then I just thought, I don't know, I, it would be weird of me to ignore it in a way, even though I feel like we are so oversaturated with information about coronavirus that probably the last thing you wanna see is just a random opinion on it. Um, because does the world need me to talk about it? Not really, but am I going to? Yeah, because it feels weird to ignore it. Plus, I have gotten questions from people asking me like my thoughts on COVID-19 or like letting me know that they're worried about it and should they be and like all this stuff. So I'm just gonna chat with you about um, how I'm dealing with this whole coronavirus business. So I feel like my experience has been a little bit different than most people. Um, I don't know, I'm just seeing all over social media that everybody is self-isolating, staying home, working from home, and I just don't get to do that. Um, I am still going to work full time, working my exact same hours, and so in some ways, life feels a little normal because I'm still going to work just like normal. However, <laughs> work has definitely been more stressful. So if you don't know, I'm a nurse diabetes educator in a diabetes clinic, and we're still seeing patients. Um, we're taking a lot of precautions though, a lot of screening before they even get into the waiting room, and then also once they check in, we're asking them a lot of screening questions so that we're not seeing anybody that's sick or letting anybody that's sick wait in the waiting room. Um, but if you're well and you haven't traveled recently, we're still seeing patients. But we have moved to a lot of like video type visits for a lot of the vulnerable people especially. Um, but as an educator and a nurse, I can't do those visits, but our providers have been doing that. But the stressful thing is, is that the recommendations around this are changing all the time. So like I literally at work get an email, oh gosh, how many emails a day probably? Probably at least five-ish a day, three to five probably, so maybe not at least five. I get three to five emails every single day at work about coronavirus, um, if not more than that. And they're long and they're detailed and you're trying to keep up and your managers are coming around and telling you what you need to be aware of and what you need to do and what our policies are and what's changing and it's just, it's really overwhelming. <laughs> when I first started hearing about coronavirus and stuff, I wasn't really that worried about it. Like I was aware of everything and I was like, okay, like we can do this. And then I hit this point where I just got really anxious about it. Um, and thankfully what helped me was listening to my church's sermon online. And the sermon was all about just trusting in God. And it was just a great reminder and really, really encouraging. So I kind of go up and down because at some moments life just feels completely normal and other moments it completely doesn't because I go out to drive to work and the traffic is so minimal or I drive by restaurants and they're completely closed till further notice. And it's just like, there's normalcy, but there's also like really weirdness. And whenever I go on social media, I see that everybody is staying home and indoors and they're working from home or they're losing their jobs, which is just, awful. Um, so yeah, it's just a weird time. And I think this is the first time I've really experienced something that is so universal and worldwide. So like usually when something's going on in your life that's stressing you out, it's very personal to you or your community or your family or friend group. But this is something that's really reaching and impacting the entire world, which I feel like is pretty rare. Um, and so it's just kind of a weird feeling. If you're looking for advice about coronavirus stuff, Obviously, don't look to me for advice on how to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Follow the CDC guidelines, obviously. I think that goes without saying. Wash your hands frequently, social distance. Um, if your city or your state is on like a lockdown or a stay-at-home order, don't go out unless you have to. Go out for essentials and stay home as much as you can. Also, disinfecting stuff frequently is important. So like at work, for instance, we're cleaning stuff off even more frequently than we were before all that kind of stuff. Obviously you've heard all this stuff before and you don't need me to say it. In terms of type one diabetes and COVID-19, it's been interesting because I have thought in the past that I was more likely to get sick in general. Like I felt like I got sick consistently every winter and I was just more likely to get illnesses, but it turns out that's not really the case. And so JDRF has these like, I think it's like top 10 things about coronavirus and type one diabetes. Um, so I'll leave a link for it in the description. But it's basically saying if your diabetes is considered well controlled, you're not at any higher risk of actually contracting the illness. And the way the um, doctor at the diabetes clinic I work at put it, he's like, you're not at any more risk to get it. People with diabetes, if they get it, 
you know, they're potentially more likely to have complications or get more sick. Um, Cause if you think about it, like, you know, your blood sugars can get thrown off is what I'm thinking. Your, you know, ketones can develop that kind of stuff, but actually getting it, you're not at higher risk. And I imagine that if you did get it, you'd be able to fight it off easier if your A1C was, you know, in the sevens or below compared to if it was a lot higher. So that's not to scare those of you who do have higher A1Cs. Um, it's just to point out that just because you have diabetes as a diagnosis, it doesn't mean that you're way more susceptible to getting coronavirus or way more susceptible to dying from coronavirus, but um, your blood sugars being elevated can play a role in how the illness affects you, um, how you're able to fight it, but similar to the risk of complications, right? Like as your A1C goes up, your risk of complications, long-term complications goes up from diabetes. I kind of have been thinking about it similar to that. Um, again, I'm not a expert on coronavirus or COVID-19 or anything like that, but that's my understanding of it. Again, I'll link the thing from JDRF down below. Follow the CDC guidelines, of course. Um, yeah, trying to think if there's anything else I wanna say. I mean, it is really nice that they said that we can still go out and exercise and take our dogs on walks and stuff like that. So I've still been going for runs or taking amps for a walk and that kind of stuff. Um, thankfully, at my new place that I moved to this year, I have a backyard and so I've really enjoyed taking my dog in my backyard and getting some fresh air. Definitely get some fresh air if you're stuck inside a lot. Um, I think it's cool that people are finding like new ways to entertain themselves and new things to have fun with, like board games or puzzles or, crafting or reading or cooking and i think people are really branching out in their hobbies which is i don't know kind of cool and spending more family time and all of that um, obviously not every family system is super healthy or productive so it does um, present new problems for people that already have problems in their family if they're stuck at home and of course there's always negatives with the positives of everything um, but i think it has been cool to see some positives come out of this like horrible global pandemic so i guess Overall, keep watching your blood sugars, keep taking your insulin, make sure you're stocked up on what you need, but not anything more than what you need. I have just been doing pretty much normal grocery shopping, um, not stockpiling anything. I'm caught up on all my prescriptions though, like my insulin and my test strips and my pump supplies and my Dexcoms. Um, I have heard a lot of pharmacies are switching to also mail them out to you. So if you don't wanna leave your house for your prescriptions, definitely ask your pharmacy about that. And I have heard too that I think insurances are letting you get like an extra 30 days worth of your medications. Um, so if that would make you feel more comfortable doing that, that could be good too. I personally haven't done that, but I have heard that as an option. So there's definitely things you can do to make yourself feel more secure without going crazy and stockpiling and um, taking resources away from other people. So basically what I'm thinking about is toilet paper, which I'm literally almost completely out of. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you liked my background i'm using my natural light from my sliding glass door and i am just in my main living space and i'm in a rocking chair that i inherited from my nana and i love it so anyway give this video a thumbs up if you liked it feel free to leave your comments down below letting me know what you think letting me know how you're dealing with all of this and subscribe if you haven't already i make new videos about diabetes all the time and i will see you guys very soon bye Listening to us the whole time? Being a good pup? Oh! Good girl. Obviously, nothing I say in this video should be taken as medical or nursing advice. Talk to your own doctor, your own diabetes team if you have any concerns about your health, coronavirus, your diabetes supplies, anything like that. These are just my opinions. I just want you guys to be safe and talk to the medical professionals that actually know you and can individualize it for you. Anyway, love you guys. Stay safe out there. Bye.